Welcome to the celebration of the Mass for the third Sunday of Easter, where we are also celebrating the Sacrament of First Communion for six special First Communicants. Our readings today begin on page 146. Please rise for our entrance song, number 305, Gather the People. The banquet is 
is ready now to be shared. Join in the heavenly feast that God has prepared. Around this table we tell great tales, the wondrous stories of grace. We hold the memory of Christ the Lord, so we Banquet is ready now to be shared. Join in the heavenly feast that God has prepared. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Lord our God, in your mercy be present to your people's prayers, and for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy. And through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received, and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism through Christ our Lord. For the blessing, please join in number 643, Living Streams. Blessed Savior, pour upon us living streams of water. Shower us with godliness and bathe us in your light. Chosen people, royal priesthood, heaven's pride and glory. Gathered here to celebrate the wedding feast of Christ the Lamb. Blessed Savior, pour upon us living streams of water. Shower us with godliness and bathe us in your light. Chosen people, royal priesthood, heaven's pride and glory, gathered here to celebrate the wedding feast of Christ the May Almighty God cleanse us of our sins, and through the celebration of this Eucharist, make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, Glory to 
God in the highest, and on earth peace on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified a servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life, life you put to death but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Just God, 
you who relieve me when I am in distress. Have pity on me and hear my prayer. Lord, let your face shine on us. Know that the Lord does wonders for his faithful one. The Lord will hear me when I call upon him. Lord, let your face shine on us. O Lord, let the light of your countenance shine upon us. You put gladness into my heart. Lord, let your face shine on us. As soon as I lie down, I fall peacefully asleep. For you alone, O oh Lord, bring security to my dwelling. Lord, let your face Reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I'm writing this to you that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The best way the way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus had made known to them, was made known to them in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. 
Then he said to them, why are you troubled and why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written that, Christ, that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are my witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. I want to begin today by speaking on a young man who was recently beatified. Blessed Carlo Acutis is an Italian boy born in 1991 and died in just 2006. And he was beatified in 2018, so some might ask that in what happened in those 15 short years of this young man's life that were so miraculous, so remarkable, that the church offers us him as a witness to the faith. What took place in these 15 years to offer us this model of holiness of such a young man? Well, the story goes that when he grew up, he was born to some lukewarm parents that would go to Mass Christmas, Easter, maybe for a wedding or a funeral here or there. But during Carlo's first communion, around this time, when he was just seven or eight years old, he had a deep and abiding love for our Lord. And a deep and abiding love for the Eucharist that after he received our Lord for the, in the Eucharist for the first time, he would drag his parents to church with him, forcing his mom and dad to take him on the weekends, asking them to go to Mass during the week for daily Mass. And this love of the church and of the sacraments continued in his short life. As he got older, he got interested in coding. This is when computers were first starting to boom. And at the same time as he was learning how to create things on the internet, he found out about Eucharistic miracles. These stories throughout the history of the church that prove the true presence of Christ in the Eucharist. Like the example at Orvieto in Italy, when the priest comes to Mass struggling with the belief that Christ is truly present in the host, and withstanding his doubt, he looks down during the Mass after saying the words of consecration, and blood is pouring forth from the host, showing us that it is truly his body, blood, soul, and divinity. Or several similar stories throughout the world where a host bleeds. Or other stories where churches catch fire and the only thing left standing is the tabernacle with the host exposed. So as a young boy, Carlo became enthused for these incredible stories of the Eucharist throughout the church, throughout the history of the church. And so what did he do? But he created a website, a blog to tell people about these stories, a website that we can still visit today. And so it goes through the different countries and the different miracles that have happened. And so Carlo was just amazed at this gift we had in the Eucharist. Saying that, quote, the Eucharist is the highway to heaven, contrary to the ACDC song that goes the other direction. The highway to heaven, and when asked about his plans for the future, he said, my plan is to stay close to Jesus always. What a great plan for all of us. And Carlo, a normal young boy, played PlayStation, he wore Nikes. His tomb, where he's in, in Assisi, 
the side of the casket is open, or glass. So you can see him laying there in sweatpants and Nike, Nike shoes, just like any other normal teenager from that time. What rung so true for him was his love of God and love of the Eucharist. And I wanted to bring this up today, because our first reading, that collect we heard at the beginning of Mass, talks about having a renewed, a renewed youthfulness of spirit. I thought that was so fitting as we come this weekend to see these young men and women receive their first Holy Communion. For 47 young parishioners across our parish will receive Christ for the first time in the Eucharist this weekend, six here at this Mass. And it's interesting, I think in, in many ways it inspires us, it sparks us to see them come forward for the first time. As far as I've talked to many of them throughout the parish, they're all very nervous. Don't be nervous, everything's going to be fine. But they're worried about when they bow and what to do with their hands and what they say. And they want to get it just right. And for me, it was beautiful because how often, me as the priest or us in the pews, do we not think twice about what we're doing? We come forward for the hundredth, if not thousandth of times, walking through the motions, not thinking about what we're doing. I had a beautiful experience. I went and talked to some of the second graders at Seton the other day. And I asked them about their first communion and how they were excited. And every week they have mass with the rest of the Garrigan students and they watch. These kids watch. And they said, well, sometimes the high school kids come up and they act like they don't even want to be there. And I said, oh, how right you are. <laughs> but they, they talked about how these, these high schoolers, these teenagers whose faces are not yet awake at 8.30, how they come forward and go through the motions, they don't even look up, they receive the Eucharist and walk on like nothing has happened. Yet these little ones, as they come forward for the first time, are so intentional, so reverent, so loving, receiving our Lord in a new way. And so they have something really beautiful to teach us today. They're here to inspire us and how lucky we are that in the church we get to experience this every year. As new Christians are brought into the church, as new Christians receive our Lord in the Eucharist for the first time. So let their joy, their excitement, their reverence shake us out of our monotony. Let them shake us and show us what a gift this truly is. Let them be our teachers today. The Blessed Carlo once asked his mother, he said, Mom, I often see lines of people waiting to get into football games. Or lines of people going to concerts, lines of people waiting for the next iPhone. Since I rarely see people lined up to get into Mass. I rarely see people lined up to go adore our Lord in the tabernacle. So from such a young age, he recognized that the priorities of our world are not always set in right order. And that we can set our Lord at the center. And that makes everything else fall in line. And so let us ask for that grace of that childlike faith today. Not to just listen and believe anything that anyone tells us, but to listen and believe because of the authority and the power of the one who says it. For when God says, this is my body and this is my blood, let us believe that. And so as we come forward to receive him today, as we come and line up to receive our Lord, let our hearts burn within us with excitement, with joy, with a newness of youthfulness in our life, that we receive him, receive the grace we need, that when we go out from here, we can bring Christ to those who don't know him. We can bring Christ to a world that desperately needs him.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we joyfully celebrate the resurrection of Christ, let us remember the true meanings of this great day. We'll have our first communicants that are doing the petitions come forward. For Pope Francis, may God preserve his health as he leads the church in wisdom and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Bishop Nicholas, Father Matthew, Fa Father Jones, and all the priests who bring us the gift of Jesus in the Holy Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders, may they always promote the dignity of human life with justice and integrity, we pray to the Lord. For each of us, may we develop a deeper reverence for the Eucharist and, and receive Jesus with ever greater devotion, we pray to the Lord. For parents, grandparents, and religion teachers, may God bless them for helping us prepare for this special day. We pray to the Lord. For those who have died, especially our family members and loved ones, may they rest in peace as the risen Lord. We pray to the Lord. We ask, Lord, that you hear the prayers we offer and help us live our lives as Jesus did with love, forgiveness, and sacrifice for our sakes. We make these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. For the preparation of gifts, please join in singing number 396, Christ Be Beside Me. Christ be beside me, Christ be before me, Christ be behind me, King of my heart. Christ be within me, Christ be below me, Christ be above me, never to part. Christ on my right hand, Christ on my left hand, 
Christ all around me, shield in the strife. Christ in my sleeping, Christ in my sitting, Christ in my rising, light of my life. Christ be in all hearts, thinking about me. Christ be on all tongues, telling of me. Christ be the vision in eyes that see me, in ears that hear me, Christ ever be. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Oh, 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith When we eat this bread And drink this cup We proclaim your death, O Lord Until you come again Therefore, O Lord as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal, eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with blessed Carlo Acutis, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Walker, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be. For communion, we will be doing song 344, Gift of Finest Sweet, but we're going to start with instrumental music while the first communicants receive. Just a, quick, just a quick note before we get started. We'll have the first communicants and their parents come up first. Um, so the six of them and their parents will receive from me and then they uh, go to the chalice. Um, the, the rest of the congregation will come up after the first communicants are done. Thank you.
satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come, give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. As when the shepherd calls his sheep, they voice. So when you call your family, Lord, we follow and rejoice. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread to eat. With joyful lips we sing to you our praise and gratitude that you should count us worthy, Lord, to share this heavenly food. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come, give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. Is not the cup we bless and share, the blood of Christ outpoured? Do not one cup, one loaf declare, our oneness in the Lord. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come, give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. The mystery of your presence, Lord, no mortal tongue can tell, whom all the world cannot contain, comes in our hearts to dwell. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come Give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. You give yourself to us, O Lord, then selfless let us be to serve each other in your name, in truth and charity. Satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come, give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. A few announcements for the week. First, there's a day of prayer and reflection scheduled for here at the Grotto this coming Saturday, April 20th. It's a guided meditation on sacred scripture and the artwork here at the Grotto um, put together by Monsignor Gears. So please contact the Grotto for more information, have any questions, or to register for this event. April is Domestic Abuse Prevention Month, and our Catholic daughters here in the parish will be collecting donations to help stop um, domestic abuse. And our coming Sunday Mass is the 20th and the 21st. Half the donations will stay in the local area uh, to assist in every way they can. Our next Catholic Son Theology on Tap event will be this coming Sunday evening, April the 21st, at Johnny's Bar and Grill in Wesley. Doors will open at 6 o'clock with our guest speaker being Father Andrew Marr. He's our neighbor to the east um, in Hancock County, Britt, Forest City, and those, and those parishes um, from the Archdiocese of Dubuque. So you're all invited to come join us for that. And this coming Thursday on the 18th, we will be our next parish encounter night. Um, so we'll have um, Eucharistic adoration, confession, um, worship, praise and worship music, following the 5.30 p.m. Mass that's already scheduled here on Thursday. So there won't be any confessions beforehand. Um, so a 5.30 Mass, confessions, adoration after the Mass here on this Thursday. And lastly, the con- collection for the confirmation student's mission trip ends this coming Tuesday. Um, so items can be put in the back of the church or in the basement entrance. Thank you for your generosity with that. And lastly, I think uh, we can congratulate and thank the, the students today for doing a great job helping with the Mass and congratulate them on this wonderful day. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Our sending forth song is number 642, We Belong to You. of your mercy when the old becomes the new souls united in the mystery we belong to you we belong to you O Lord of our longing we belong to In our daily living, dying and rising, we belong to you. Filled with gifts and filled with goodness, spirit breathing life into all who seek to find their purpose, we belong to you. We belong to you, O Lord of our longing. We belong to you in our day.